Chapter 4 Arrival in Johannesburg The train thundered on all through the night and Kumalo woke to the half-light before the dawn. This is a new country, a strange country, rolling and rolling away as far as the eye can see. There are new names here, hard for a Zulu who speaks English, for they are in the language that is called Afrikaans, a language that he has never yet had spoken. The mines, the men sitting near him, cry. The mines, for many of them, are going to work in the mines. Are these the mines, those white flat hills in the distance? There is the rock out of the mines, umfundis. The gold has been taken out of it. How does the rock come out? We are go we go down under the group and dig it out, umfundis. And when it is hard to dig, we go away and the white men blow it out with their fire sticks. Then we come back and clear it away. We load it and it goes up in the in a cage. How does it go up? It, wound, it is a wound up by a great wheel. There is a wheel. Umfundis there is a wheel. A great iron structure rising into the air and a great wheel above it. Great buildings and steam blows blowing out of pipes and men herring about and endless lines of lorries, motor cars, buses. One great confusion. Is that Joe Beck? He asked. They laughed. That is nothing, they say. In Johannesburg there are buildings. So high, but they cannot describe them. Rail railway lines, railway lines. It is a wonder. To to the left, to the to the left, to the right. So many that he cannot count. A train rushes past them and makes his, him jump in his seat. The buildings get higher. The streets more com uncountable. How does one find one's way in such a confusion? It is getting dark and the lights are coming on in the streets. One of the main points for him, Johannesburg, Mfundis, he sees great high buildings. The train stops under a great roof and there are thousands of people. Steps go down into the earth. And here is a path under the ground. Black people, white people, so many that the path is full. He comes out into a great hall and goes up the steps. And here he is, out in the street. The noise is frightening. Cars and buses one behind other. More than he has ever imagined. His heart beats like that of a child. God watch over me, he says to himself. God, watch over me. A young man came to him and said, Where do you want to go, Umfundis? To Sophia Town, young man. Come with me, then I shall show you. He was grateful for this kindness, but half of him was afraid. He was confused by the many turnings that they made under the high buildings. But at last, they came to a place of many buses. You must stand in, li in the line, Umfundis. Have you, have you your money for the ticket? Have you have your money for your ticket? Quickly, agently, as though he must show this young man that he appreciated this, his kindness. He put down his bag and took out his purse. He was nervous to ask how much it was and took a pound from the purse. Shall I get the ticket for you, Mfundisi? Then you need to lose your place in the line while I go to, to the ticket office. 
thank you, he said. The young man took the pound and walked a short distance to the corner. As he turned it, Kumal was afraid. The line moved forward and he and he with it, and again forward, and again forward, and soon he must enter a pass, but still he had no ticket. He left the line and walked in the corner, but there was no sign of the of the young man. He sought courage to speak to someone and went to an elderly man, decently cleanly dressed. Where is the ticket officer? Office, my friend. What ticket office? Umfundis. For the ticket for the pass. You get your ticket on the pass. There is no ticket office. The man looked at the said man, and the priest spoke to him respectfully. I gave a pound to a young man, he said, and he told me he would get my ticket at the ticket office. You have been cheated, Umfundis. Can you see the young man? No, you will not see him again. Look, come with me. Where are you going? Sophia Town. Yes, Sophia Town, to the mansion house. Oh, yes, I know it well. I shall come with you myself. Do you know the Reverend Msimang? Indeed, I have a letter from him. They again took the last place in the line, and in time they took their places in the bus. They got off at small street and walked a great distance until at last they stopped before a house with lights on and knocked. The door was opened by a tall young man in priest dress. Mr. Msimang, I bring a friend to you, the Reverend Kumalo from Dojin. Come in. Come in, my friend. Mr. Kumal, I am glad to greet you. You are no doubt hungry. Mr. Kumal, Mr. Mofolo, will you stay for some food? But Mr. Mofolo would not wait. The door shut after him and Kumalo settled himself in a big chair. The room was light. The great confusing town was shut out and Kumalo was thankful the long journey to Johannesburg was over and he had taken a linking to his young confident man. In good time, no doubt they would come to discuss the reasons for his journey. For the moment, it was enough to feel welcome and secure.